Hey YouTube, Jake here. If you've ever been to Japan, you've probably noticed how clean the streets are, yet there really aren't that many bins out and about. Well, we've spent the last few weeks looking into how the country deals with its rubbish, because just 1% of council waste here ends up in landfill. Instead, much of it simply gets burnt. Yep, dumped, crushed and chucked into an incinerator. This is Toshima Incineration. It's in northern Tokyo and is one of 21 which burn the millions of tons of rubbish generated here in the world's biggest metropolis. Tokyo是今使っている新海面処分場しか残されていませんこれを私たちの未来の世代にも使って使えるようにするために、ゴミを埋め立て処分量の削減をしていかなければいけません。ゴミは燃やすと体積が20分の1になります。Mr. Sasaki tells me it's more than 850 degrees inside the incinerator, and that heat does more than just burn the rubbish. The giant stacks from these incinerators really blend into Tokyo's vast skyline, but in Osaka, 500 kilometres to the west, they're an architectural marvel. Before there was a GPS in every smartphone, tourists used to mistake this Maishima plant for the nearby Universal Studios theme park. What you can see is pretty impressive, but what about what you can't, as in the gases being released from the plants? Well, around two decades ago, experts say Japan brought in tough new laws to try to curb the toxic emissions being released from incinerators. Uh, the southern Japanese town of Kamikatsu had one of those incinerators that had to be shut down. That left the tiny village with a big problem. Its answer? Trying not to produce any waste at all. Everything gets smashed, stripped and sorted into 45 different categories. The town doesn't have rubbish collectors, so locals have to bring their waste here and sort it themselves. And that means making sure everything is thoroughly cleaned and decontaminated. <laughs> ま、一応数字上で言うと 80% 製品を作った時点でもうもうリサイクルのことを考えて作られてないものとかもあるんで as much as possible, the materials get recycled within the town. Grandmothers fashion recycled fabric into everything from purses to wallets to kimonos. But many of the village's 1,500 residents are ageing and don't have cars. So once a month, council workers make the journey up the town's narrow streets to check in and see what's been chucked out. That's where we meet 83-year-old Hifumi Nishi. She tells us it can be hard work to sort it into so many categories. <laughs> But it's worth it to make sure the pristine village she calls home stays that way. Not 
Japan uses almost 10 million tons of plastic every year, and the country's culture of wrapping and presentation means even a humble pineapple can have three layers of packaging. Some local governments in Japan are forcing residents to pay for the unrecyclable waste they produce. It's known as pay as you throw, and something experts say could work in Australia. This is the annual Tokyo Niku Fest, or Meat Festival. The beef's being sliced, the J-pop is pumping, and the rubbish is piling up. Environmentalists are helping attendees understand why separation is important for recycling. And the more garbage can separate, the more can be recycled. If the garbage is all together, it cannot recycle. What do you think? Would having to sort your recycling and rubbish into 45 different categories make you use less? What about having to pay for every bag you can't recycle? Let us know in the comments.